Speaker. I rise today to uh, address the completely inconsistent and incompetent way that the government has been holding the community of Maitland to account. There, uh, we are having such a huge problem in my community in getting schools to cope with our growing population. We're the fastest growing city in New South Wales outside of Sydney. Our growth before, um, from the last census was of some 15%. And yet the government is failing to provide our students with schools. There's been no promised new schools under this government. Um, we have school, primary schools of uh, over 900 students that were built originally for some 400. They've got a proliferation of, uh, of demountables happening in these schools. Three in one school just in the time that I've been the member have been added as demountables. But this has got a real human face, Mr Temporary Speaker, and I have so many parents coming to me asking me how they can get their children into the same schools as their siblings because they have been refused enrolment because they've been deemed to be out of zone enrolments. And one of those families came to uh, my office uh, a month ago, in fact, and uh, that has been a real problem for them. They have tears every, every night at home. Uh, Michael and Ashley Gibson have little Charlotte that they're trying to get her into uh, the East Maitland public school to join her older sisters Madison and Isabella and for six years this couple's been working hard they've been saving a deposit so that they can go to live in that uh, to, to buy a house in that area of the school that their children have been attending and they've been told that they cannot get poor little Charlotte enrolled in that school because she lives something in the order of four houses out of zone four houses. So they have lived there, they've been renting. When they went to enrol Madison, no problems, that's fine, we'll take the enrolment. When they went to enrol Isabella, no problem, we'll take the enrolment. No mention that there could ever be a problem. Go to enrol Charlotte and no, not allowed to uh, enrol her in this school because she's not in the area. Now this is an issue that is of great concern to the people in my community. And so earlier this year in February, I actually asked a question to the Minister for Education, asking how many out-of-zone applications were made in 2016 for placements this year in each of the following schools. And I listed all the schools and high schools in my electorate. And then I asked the minister how many appeals were made to applications that were initially rejected, how many applications and appeals were successful, and what are the capacities of each school as at the 15th February 2017. Now, the answer that I got back six weeks later was at best a non-answer, but a complete abrogation of any responsibility. The Minister said that he was advised that all schools are required to follow the Department of Education's enrolment policy. Every eligible student who wishes to attend a New South Wales government school will be given a place at their local school. That is, of course, unless they're four doors up from being in the zone, which is ridiculous and they've got two siblings there. The department does not have fixed enrolment capacities at New South Wales government schools, but yet they can tell these students that they're out of zone and there's no room for them. Then they've said that the um, schools have the capacity to adapt to fluctuating enrolments through the use of a combination of temporary and permanent teaching spaces. Well, where's that for little Charlotte Gibson? Where non-local enrolment is possible and places exceed availability, a placement panel is formed. The placement panel considers non-local enrolment applications in line with the department's policy. Now, I could have told the minister all of that. That was not my question. My question was how many of those applications have been made in 2016 for 2017 placements? How many appeals were made? How many applications and appeals were <coughs> successful? And what the capacities were? The minister did not answer this question, and I really am quite uh, concerned at the failure of the minister to take an interest in schools. We've had some really serious issues about capacity, overcrowding, poor um, infrastructure, a whole range of issues. Now, I have met with the minister on one particular case, but it's just this goes on and on. I've got <laughs> schools that are making funding through community building partnership for air conditioning because. According to the department, it's not hot enough in Maitland in February. Now, Tamri Speaker, you 
used to live up in the Hunter. You know how hot it gets in Maitland in February. Imagine being a little six or seven year old in all this time, or five year old, trying to learn in those classrooms. And who's having to fund it? The parents and friends, and that's not fair. So I am asking the Minister for Education to build some schools in Maitland, match the Labor's promise from the last election for a new primary school and a high school, and listen to our community. Thank you. I call the member for Terry. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr.